Well, there's no great skies this morning. That's out, out of the question. So uh, predictions, I mean, I was looking at it. There just wasn't really any high clouds. I mean, I had, I had the, all the rest of the conditions that make for a great sky and um, just really no clouds to really light up anything. So I'm going to try to eliminate as much of the sky as I can over here on this composition. I've shot this before. And the fall colors, I think, were okay. I think this year is probably a little bit better. But really, by and large, the fall colors are terrible this year. I mean, yeah, we just haven't had a lot of rain. And there's, it, it's just, we kind of went from green to kind of brown. I mean, there's some color, but yeah, not really, uh, not really spectacular. So nothing to write home about, but nevertheless, I'm gonna capture an image anyway because it's all about the art of photography, right? And uh, and getting out, getting out in na nature and experiencing the outdoors, even if it's cold, doesn't matter. Yeah. Well, the good news is there's no wind. And uh, I think if there was wind, I'd certainly be a lot colder than I am. And speaking of the cold, I wanted to take a minute this morning and talk about some kind of cold weather gear and how I bundle up for the winter. I know this is Texas and you know, Texas, we hardly get any, uh, any cold weather. I think maybe we have two or three days out of the year that are cold. I'm just kidding. It's probably a little bit more than that, maybe two or three weeks. I'm kidding. But anyway, it's uh, for, for the most part, pretty warm here in Texas, but nevertheless, it does get cold and I do travel to some of the colder areas. But one thing I want to talk about, and I think I mentioned these before, are the heat company, kind of the glove system from the heat company. What I really like about it is it is a system and basically consists of three parts. You've got the liner, which is a, a pair of gloves and they have tips on them that you can interact with your computer screens and cell phones, but still keep your fingers covered, which is a plus. And the gloves come in, uh, or the liners, I, I should say, come in various thicknesses. But anyway, um, you know, you can go, you can get the uh, really, really thick ones or really thin ones, so depending on the time of year, and you can use the liners just by themselves as gloves. But uh, the cool thing about these gloves is there's pockets on the liner uh, and there's pockets on the shell. This is a three-part system. It has the liner, the shell, right, which is a mitten, and then there's a hood that goes over the shell for extra warmth and protection. This is just a great system. I learned about these from Peter Fritz. I'll put a, a link to his channel up here, but uh, Peter Fritz, I really appreciate that. Uh, he recommended these, and I think these are made in Austria. Just really great gloves, really good system to keep your hands warm. And uh, like I mentioned, I, I love these pockets for keeping hand warmers in. I got a couple in there now, and it keeps my fingers warm, which really keeps me uh, up to the point where I can operate my camera, and that's really, really what I want to do. I mean, comfort is a big, big part of it as well, but I really, when your fingers are frozen, you can't operate the camera. It's just too difficult. Another thing about these gloves that are really spectacular is you can pull back the thumbs and expose your thumb, and the magnet, there's little magnets that kind of hold that flap down so it doesn't get in your way. Same thing with your fingers. You can get that out, attach that back. Honestly, that's just spectacular for for uh, really getting access to your fingers and, and getting access to your camera with but being able to quickly get your fingers back in there with your hand warmers and, and keep warm. So I really like the magnets and they really work well. There's uh, other things that make these gloves great. You can attach them to your wrists so you can pull them off and leave them dangling. And, uh, and that's very beneficial too. One of the things I find that's often forgotten in cold weather is acclimating your gear. Now, there, there's a lot of YouTube uh, discussions on how to acclimate gear for, for the cold weather. And that's whether you're bringing your gear from a cold climate into warm weather or from warm weather into a cold climate. For, In other words, from outside into your house or from your house to uh, outside. But uh, in either case, condensation builds up on the camera. And at the minimum, what it'll do to you is it'll fog up your lens and you can't take a picture. Your LCD, even your viewfinder, you just can't see. You can't see, you can't really take the picture. So um, the other thing is that the condensation can build up in the camera, inside the lens, and, and later cause mold and other things. So it's best to acclimate your gear. So it's a couple thoughts on doing this. Uh, one is when you go from 
from one extreme temperature to the other is while you're in the, the, the current conditions, for example, in the cold weather, take your camera and put it in a, in a plastic bag and seal it up like a big Ziploc bag. Um, that, that's one option. I prefer, I, I, I keep the, uh, everything in my backpack. So actually before I came out uh, this morning, I had set everything out into the garage, which is much colder. And then uh, on top of that, I had put things out uh, outside on the patio uh, to, to get acclimated a couple hours before I came out. So to make sure that I didn't have any issues with uh, any uh, my, my lens fogging up or anything icing up on the camera. So, um, and I think the backpack, if you have a backpack that zips completely up, that really works best. And, uh, and you can, if you're really worried about the extreme temperatures, you can take your backpack and put it in a big garbage bag and seal that up so you can seal the whole thing up. But what I find more often uh, than not, actually I've never had an issue with a, a good thick backpack, good quality backpack that zips completely up, is that it, it allows the gear to slowly acclimate from one temperature to another. And, and it takes a, a few hours, a good couple, two, three hours to do that. So uh, I've never had any issues with that. So just a good tip for you to keep in mind that a good backpack or a good thick bag um, can really go a long way in getting your gear acclimated before you head out to shoot and you can't. I think it's one of those times where, you know, you feel pressured, you can't find a composition. And, and it's not that I can't find one, there's one here, but I've captured it before and I'm pretty sure I'm gonna get back in post-processing, I'm gonna look at the two images and I'm gonna think, yeah, you knew that when you were out there, why did you shoot that again? I don't really think I can improve on it. And I really wasn't thrilled about that composition anyway. So I, I see a composition with the waterfalls and kind of, it's kind of back in here with the, with the waterfall. I really need to zoom in on it with a longer lens. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with the 24 to seven, or the, excuse me, the 70 to 200. See if I can really crunch in on that, compress the falls with the trees in the background and maybe make a square image or 5.4, but uh, maybe square. I don't know how it's gonna look, but there's not a lot of sky. And so there's not a lot of clouds, I should say. So I really wanna eliminate as much of the sky as I can. To see if I can capture the water, the mist, and, and the color and the falls and the trees. Anyway, that's what I'm thinking. We'll see. So what I'm trying to do I've, I've got no clouds, so I've got a little blue sky in this. I actually like the composition. I like the way the sun is reflecting off the mist and providing a warm glow. And um, I'm trying to get my shutter speed to about a quarter of a second to get enough motion blur in the water. And there's really no wind, so I don't have to worry about blur in the, in the trees. But uh, I like how the, the light is illuminating the top of the trees, but it really makes it bright. So I dropped in uh, a graduated ND filter to kind of take that edge off the top of the trees. It really blends in nicely. Um, there's other options too. I could capture a couple of exposures. With no wind, it'd be an, e or with no wind, it'd be an easy blend in Photoshop. And uh, in fact, I could probably brush it in. But uh, a good thing to do here is to, uh, and I talked about this before, is ETTR, exposed to the right. So capturing an image as far to the right as you can without clipping any of the highlights. Um, that's, I think, the essential part. So that way, remember, it's all about options when you get back in post-processing. So uh, pushing that far to the right will allow me to get all the detail I want in the shadows without clipping the highlights. But I also take an image, um, a, a properly exposed image, because I think I can really get this with one image, especially with an ND filter balancing out the exposure. So I'm really not clipping any highlights at all. And uh, yeah, I definitely, uh, the D850, it's just a beast when it comes to pulling detail out of, the, out of the shadows, clean details out of the shadows. So I really don't worry about that too much. So I captured a couple compositions, uh, F13 at about a quarter of a second. So that should give me enough depth of field this far away, shouldn't be any issue. And um, while also giving me that shutter speed that, uh, that I want to really capture, capture the blur in the water, get a bit of the mist. I did use a uh, circular polarizer on this just to, to really make those colors pop. 
to take the, uh, the glare off the top of the trees from the light reflecting off the leaves and also the light reflecting off the water but it kind of cuts down on the fog. So it cuts through the fog, which really, I like the fog or the mist, I should say. I like the mist, but I think I'll still have enough mist in the image to really get everything I want, which is the fall color, the mist, the motion blur in the water. It'd be nice if I had some clouds in the background, but that's just not in the forecast. Not in the picture right now. You gotta take, the, take what you can get. But like I say, you know, I'm happy to be out. It's just wonderful to be out today on a fall morning like this. This little cold, but nothing I can't handle. Well, I think I captured an image I'll be happy with, but you never know until you get back in post-processing and, and really see it, so. But uh, anyway, I hope you liked the video and I hope there were some tips that uh, I was able to give you that, that maybe will benefit you down the road. But uh, anyway, if you did like the video, make sure you hit that like button and consider subscribing to the channel. And drop me a comment, and let me know your thoughts. And as always, if I don't see you down the road, Maybe I'll see you on the trail. Well, this image was a welcome surprise. It turned out much better than I had thought. I like the composition, but I don't much care for the empty space in the sky. I think this image would have been much better with some soft clouds filled with subtle shades of red kind of fading into the trees below. Nevertheless, the reflective light from the morning mist it added a bit of mystique while complementing the overall warm tones of the image. It's too bad autumn is such a short season. I know there are many more images that await discovery, but unfortunately, there's never enough time to capture them all. One must be selective in choosing destinations with great forethought.